Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Rockies franchise. Now, this is the episode where we reveal all of these custom recruits. It's over 150 plus of them. Took a lot of time to do, but finally got it done. Now, I did. I just want to explain like how I did this. Now, I I actually spread everybody throughout the league, so not everybody is in the Colorado Rockies organization, and I did a good job of putting everybody on every team, NL, AL, whatever the case may be. Now, some guys will be Double A, some will be Triple A, and some will actually be Single A as well. And pretty much how I did it is that everybody pretty much has C or, or above potential. Some guys have B, and there are some guys actually that are A, that are top prospects in the entire MLB. Some are even high overall, but lower potential. So maybe even guys that could touch the majors this season, and we will follow them as they take that journey. So how I kind of want to do it in the future is when it comes to the MLB draft, certain players will be renamed. So I will rename all of my draft picks except my first round draft pick. So first round draft pick, I will not rename on my team, but every first round draft pick on every other team, I will rename. So that makes it so that, you know, the best players that get drafted in this series are renamed to you guys. Also, I will be adjusting the overalls because I really don't like how, you know, the first overall pick in this game, for example, or second overall pick ends up being like 40 something overall sometimes and maybe realistic because, you know, sometimes these first round picks take like five years to get to the majors. But I want it to be accelerated in this series. I want it to be like two to three or four at max. I don't always want there to be like a big time gap between first round picks and when they do eventually move up to the show. I want there to be kind of a quicker turnaround there. And sometimes there are generational players where, you know, a Bryce Harper, he's in the minors for like a half season or whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden he's at the majors or some big prospect ends up being straight to the majors or you know 10 games in the minors or just a season i want there to be that kind of variability so let me know down in the comment section if you saw your recruits i like i said it's over 150 plus if you didn't get in you still have a chance obviously with the draft coming up in a couple of episodes actually next episode to be exact so let's just look at our prospects here I like kind of the guys that we have. Tresh Jenkins is an interesting guy. He is a closing pitcher, and I think that the bullpen is definitely something that I need help with because I want to groom these guys. Steven Lewis is a good A-ball player. He's 21 years old, 60 overall. Brian Simmons as well. Very good pro power, actually. He could be the future at third base for us. He's got a couple of years to develop. I think he's like three years away anyway. But then we focus on the double-A level. Let's talk about DeAnthony Pierre. If you did not see before this series started the prologue, the DeAnthony Pierre story, go check that out. It's on my channel. I'll have a link down in the description for that. And we will check out his debut as a double A starting pitcher this game. I want to see what he's got. Now, we do have a couple of prospects here with Takahashi's Contador, who's a big first baseman, a power hitting first baseman. And then John Storm, who is a third baseman, who we can develop as well. So let's see what De DeAnthony Pierre can do in his debut. Playing for the Yard Ghosts, they are 2-2 two and two on the season. And Pierre gets his first career start here, 4-5-0 ERA in just two innings. He had a relief uh, outing where he did relieve in one of the games this year. And he gave up one hit. So here he's facing Jacob Hayward to lead it off. He gets a low pitch and goes with it. 97 mile an hour on the gun. Pierre does have a pretty good fastball, but his first batter takes him to the right side for a hit. Next batter up is Gonzalez, and he hits one to left field. Back-to-back -back hits given up by Pierre as he looks a little shaky early on. Let's see if he can recover. Labor at the plate. He's hitting 250 on the year. High heat. That one reaches 99 mile an hour. A 1-2 count. This is just going to be a pop-up in the infield and caught by the third baseman, Storm. 
So Hunter Bishop at the plate, hitting 429 this year through four games. He gets a liner to center field, and that one is caught by Takahashi. Watch out for Takahashi as a center field prospect in our organization. He is very, very good. And the next batter comes up, and that's another pop-up. So he does get out of this inning with three straight outs after giving up two straight hits to start the game. So here is Hitor Takahashi. He is one of our custom recruits hitting 154 only through four games. He gets a pitch right out of the middle, and he drives it deep, but the center fielder will run this one down. One thing I love about Takahashi, he's got excellent speed. He covers great ground as well. Now here is the number one prospect in the entire organization right now, Zach V. He's hitting 333 through four games, and I'm gonna start him at double A ball. I definitely debated starting him at single A to allow him to develop. He's 18 years old. He is a power hitting lefty. Well, I shouldn't say power hitting, but he has power to his bat. Here's Santiago Contador to the plate. One of our other subscriber recruits hits one in foul territory, and that one is out. That brings up Michael Taglia, who is actually one of the top prospects in real life, top three in the organization, but he just hits a ground ball. He has pretty good batting attributes as well. So we move on to the top of the second inning, DeAnthony Pierre. Let's see if he can get out of two innings. I'm not going to pitch him too many innings here in this one. Let's see what he does. Here is Mora at the plate, who hits one to right center. That one gets all the way to the wall. Takahashi kind of let that one go past him, and the runner is rounding second, heading to third, and it's a triple. Zach Veen came up throwing, but I thought Takahashi was going to grab that one as it's now a man on third base. The next batter comes up and drives one deep to left field, and it sneaks over the wall. Raul Bautista, it's a home run. And DeAnthony Pierre gives up two runs here. And now here we are with two outs. Let's see if we can get out of this inning with the top of the lineup coming up to the plate. This is Jacob Hayward, who already has one hit. Make it two. That one bounces in fair play off of the wall and left. And we come up throwing to the cutoff man, but it is a double here with two outs. Jacob Gonzalez, who already has a hit as well. And he goes to the right side again. This one gets through. Zach Veen comes up throwing. The throw is there, but just a little offline. And wow, he had a good throw on that one. Nice arm strength, but the accuracy was just not there. Franklin Labor comes to the plate now in the three spot, and he does pop this one out. But three to nothing here in the first two innings as DeAnthony Pierre gave up a lot of hits. So we move on to the bottom of the sixth inning. Here's Zach Veen here for his second at-bat of the game. He's going to hit a ground ball to second base. That one is out. We will cover Zach Veen quite a bit in his career since he is the number one prospect. He doesn't have too many years to develop. And we will put him also in the vault. For some of you guys that are asking, Zach Veen is not in the default rosters. I created him, so I will upload him to the vault. Here he is again for his third at-bat. He is one for two in this game so far. One, two count. He hits one high and deep to left center. That one's got some carry and all the way back to the warning track. It will score a runner, so that will be a sack fly. You see the power on his bat. He can deliver there, but look at the score. It's 13 to one. Santiago Contador comes to the plate, the power hitting first baseman. He goes with that pitch all the way to left center. That one will score one. Yitor Takahashi will score as well. And that one will be a two-run double as Yitor comes across the plate. And that is going to be it for our offense. We get absolutely smoked in this one. Michael Taglia comes to the plate. He's 0 for 3. Make it 0 for 4. Inside fastball. He can't keep up. 98 mile an hour. And Richmond ends up beating us 14 to 3. DeAnthony Pierre did not have a good day at all. He ended up giving up seven runs in this game, nine hits in just two and a third. So now we just go back to the MLB level. And after checking out our prospects at AA, I think we need some work there. I think our pitching is definitely going to need to get better. That's one thing that I'm going to be looking to address in the draft because we have interesting pieces but as far as guys that i'm like all right this is going to be the future of our rotation i don't think we have like any to be honest we maybe have one or two guys 
but I don't think we have any in our organization right now that we're banking on to be the future of this organization. So we're definitely going to need to get that in the draft and groom those players up or even, you know, look to trade uh, for some prospects as well. So here are the MLB leaders. How about DJ LeMayhew in the AL? He's batting 410 to start the season. I mean, absolutely on a tear. Kyle Seager leads with triples. George Springer re leads with home runs with 12 over Mike Trout, who has 11. And then DJ LeMayhew leads an on-base percentage. OPS is led by Mike Trout. So now we look to our trading block, and like I said, I do want to start to think about acquiring guys, and I want to see what I can get for at least the players that are doing well. Now, John Gray is interesting. You know, he's doing well. He may be on his high horse right now and off to a good start, and that may yield a good trade offer for him since he's doing really well this year, but I'm going to remove him for now. I kind of want to see what I've got out of John Gray. He's kind of surprising me, so I'm going to keep him off of the trading block for now. Sam Hilliard is a guy I want to give more opportunities to, so I will not have him on the block. I thought about it, though, as well as Josh Fuentes. He's only hitting 212 so far, but I want to see what I've got. He struck out 29 times already, and I'm really, really not liking that, but it's okay. The trade block looks like this. We had Trevor Story on there. He's on the last year of his contract. We might as well get some prospects back for him. So it might be smart to start to think about who or what team I should trade him to. Now, I want to look at Kristen Pashi. He is really, really good. And he's a potential 22 years old. I think this is a guy that we could potentially go after here. And the reason why is because we need a defensive center fielder. I like Rodmel Tapia, but as you saw last episode, there were a couple of fly balls where I'm like, all right, he's got to come up throwing here, and it just wasn't there. So keep an eye out for him. What do you guys think about Pashi? I'm pretty sure I'm – I don't know if I'm saying that Nate that right. I don't, I'm not really a Braves fan, and plus we don't really see the Braves too much. I believe it's Christian Pashi. I'll have to double-check my pronunciation on that one. I always botch everybody's name. Uh, there's so many MLB players that keep up with each year, so forgive me on that front. So let's hop into some action here. We're playing San Diego now at the end of the month. Here is Trevor Story who comes up to the plate now. Man on second base. We are in extra innings. We have the extra inning rule where a man starts out at second. Here we are at home, bottom 10. Here is Trevor Story. Hit up the middle. That one drops, and a runner will come across the plate, and we get the win here versus San Diego. Five to four. How about some positivity here in this episode? We get the win after a bad loss last episode versus the Cardinals where the cards came back and we end up getting the win here. Five, four, 11 hits. So now we hop into a similar situation once again. This is a 6-6 game at home. We've had a lot of home games start out this season as now we have a man on first and third. Here's Sam Hillier at the play. I said I wanted to give him some opportunity he gets a pitch right over the middle of the plate he doesn't miss it's a walk off sam hilliard comes through the left fielder and how about him i want to see what he's got he's got to make an impression on this team especially in year one i think year one is a big impression year because it kind of decides like the direction we're going at each position and i like what i see He's hitting about 250 now after that home run, and that's actually not bad at all as he gets gives us the win here, 6-9. to nine. Charlie Blackman, 3-for-5. He is on fire as of late. So now we move into a new game here. Chris Owings gets the start today in that leadoff spot, 1-for-3 in this game. The next game versus the Cincinnati Reds, and let's see what we do facing Amir Garrett. Man on third base, one out, outside pitch. And it's ball four. Now we have men on the corners here. One out. A ground ball could end this inning, but also a hit could end this game. It's the bottom of the 13th now. Here is Colton Welker at the plate. Pitch out on the first pitch. And it's going to be a ball. I think they were looking for us to steal on that one. And look at Chris Owings. He actually slides back into first and gets hurt on that play. So we fast forward now into a three and one count. Amir Garrett pitch over the middle and it's a deep fly ball. That one should be enough to get the run in and it's gonna be missed by the right fielder. That one will do it. 
we get another win. How about the triple back to back to back walk offs here? And I love what I'm seeing so far. At least we're guts gutsing out some wins here at in the middle of May at the end of May, I should say, as we will look at the full schedule here. But Trevor story goes two for five. Um, and then Colton Welker got the start today. He went two for six. We had a lot of at bats in this one. I think the, at -b the bats are starting to wake up now. So after that game, we come out of it and look at this. We have our first trade offer and it looks like it's for Kyle Freeland. Now Kyle Freeland is 27 years old, B potential 71 overall, and they are actually looking to trade Rafael Marchand. Now, he is a decent catcher, but only 59 overall, but the A potential really gets me here. He's got some years to develop, obviously, but to trade a guy like Kyle Freeland and pick up a guy that's five years younger at a position where we need prospects and A potential, how can I turn this down? He's not a great hitter right now, but he could possibly develop into something that is very, very nice. Now, he has a high minor league salary at $630,000, but that's okay because we're not spending a lot of money right now anyway. And Kyle Freeland isn't really doing the greatest, and that's why we had him on the trading block. 1-4-4 whip. So we will accept our very first trade offer in this series. And he will actually go from the AAA level down to the AA level. AAA level, I need him to develop a little more. I could even move him to single A to get him to develop at a consistent rate. But I'm going to put him at the AA level since he does have some experience at AAA. So here is what the month of May looked like. We actually ended up sweeping the Cincinnati Reds, then won two of three from the Padres, won two of three from the Diamondbacks, and then won three of four from the Mets. How about that turnaround? We are now three games under 500. Now, as we start the month of June, playing a three game set versus the Pittsburgh Pirates. But how about this turnaround? I mean, year, month one in April was not good at all. It wasn't pretty, but the month of May doesn't look bad. So here we are now about to start a new month. And I'm thinking, man, we need to make some changes because I think we can start to compete now. Now I'm not crazy. We're not gonna compete for a World Series. But I want to see what some guys got. How about Derek Rodriguez? He's pitching phenomenal at the AAA level. He's going to replace Kyle Freeland after we just offloaded him in trade. And then I just want to give Jordan Sheffield the chance. We picked him up in the row five draft. I mean, why not? Our bullpen is not good at all. He's got a .93 whip and 45 innings pitched at the AAA level. I mean, he is having an excellent season. Once one of the top Dodgers prospects will now get his chance finally at the show. So our rotation looks like this. Marquez and John Gray are actually doing pretty well. John Gray is surprising me. This would be one of his lowest whips of his career, definitely as low as ERA of his career. But then there's Austin Gomber. This is where it gets shaky. We need this to work because if he if he doesn't work out, this was the top guy in the Nolan Arenado trade. I mean, it was just a terrible lopsided trade. We need him to work, but I'm going to switch him down to the number five in the rotation and move Derek Rodriguez up. I'm going to see what he's got versus the number three versus another team on another team and see what he's got to start next episode. So he will pitch against Chad Cool, who, if you follow my channel, last year's MLB The Show franchise, I had Chad Cool. And let's see what Derek Rodriguez has with his debut with the Rockies. He pitched for the Giants. He has about a year of MLB experience. We'll have to see what he can do. So next episode, we will start out with that and then get into the first-year player draft as well. So you don't want to miss that. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Let me know what you guys think of that trade first trade of the series so stay tuned let's get it let's go i hope the rain don't come in november because the summer went way too fast i'm trying real hard to remember all of the good times